Hey everybody, it's Seriously Sydney here, and today I am bringing you a tutorial slash kind of walkthrough on how I inked this piece. This is called, this piece is called Mantis, and let's see here, I just transferred it to watercolor paper. The watercolor paper I'm using is Canson XL watercolor paper if you want to see how I sketch this piece can look at my previous previous video to check that out. So what else here? So I'm using this um, nib holder and nib for the first time. I believe it's a speedball quill nib holder. I'm not entirely sure on that. But the nib is the Hunt 100, 107. Yes, the Hunt 107 nib. And what did I find out about this? So something, it's very fine, like, and it's flexible, but not really flexible. Like if you, and it's very sharp, it's a very sharp nib. So I was kind of like, when I had to thicken up some of the lines, I was kind of worried about scratching the paper, which is not good if you're going to be painting watercolor over it because it just kind of looks funny and the watercolor doesn't really sit properly on it you can't quite get the smooth washes but the paper did not scratch so I was very thankful for that um, let's see here what else so the ink I'm using is some sort of sumi ink and I just poured it into this little glass jar so that it's easier for instead of the, having the big bottle so whatever I don't use gets put into a separate bottle so that I don't so that because I end up diluted diluting it a little bit with water sometimes so I don't want to put the diluted one back into the bigger bottle and slowly over time dilute the ink. Not really what I want to do, but anyway, I digress. So on this piece, I kind of started going from the bottom to the top. And I did kind of start left to right. However, I kind of ended up jumping around. And I think the fact that I was using such a thin nib it created such thin lines saved, saved me because I was not waiting for it to really dry in between. I just kind of kept going and resting my hand on the paper, which is not good when you have wet ink. So I'm very lucky it did not smear all over the place. And I need to keep that in mind in the future because I don't want to smear my next piece. That would be quite unfortunate. <laughs> okay, so one issue I did have was because this was so thin and I just had such a hard time getting the eyes right. So I, ended, I did end up having to turn the paper and all, but the eyes just didn't really turn out very smoothly. Like this eye actually turned it out uh, turned out smoothest however it kind of ended up thicker on one side which I didn't really want then but this nib was really good for doing the little plates or scales on the face it um, it does keep a fairly uniform line which I was not expecting I kind of expected to vary with pressure a little bit more however it didn't really vary too much which made the plates look nice because I didn't have to think about it so much when I was drawing or trace I guess you could call it tracing them so they turned out very even and thin and they looked somewhat realistic as far as this alienoid mantis goes <laughs> 
Um, what else? Let's see here. I did notice, yeah, like I mentioned earlier, thickening up the lines was a little bit difficult, but I think that I should have switched to a different nib to thicken them up easier. And so my process for this is I'm just kind of following the lines I already have on the paper, kind of following my sketch going over that and I wanted the lines to be fairly thin and we are getting close to my favorite part. This doing the antenna, making it like feathery and wispy with this nib was awesome. I really liked that. It just... I don't exactly know how to describe how it just made it so wispy. It's very different from like using the G-Nib or the, what is this, Global? Let me see here, let me grab this. The Hunt Global Bowl Pointed Nib, the 513 Extra Fine. It's very different. Part probably because it doesn't do all that much line variation. So what little pressure you do need to put on it to get ink out as you like I want to call it flicking, but to get the wispy ends, it just tapers off so beautifully. So if you're into tapering, I would suggest this nib. Uh, is it tapering? Hmm, I don't know how else to describe it, but yeah, creating very tapered, fine, almost hair-like lines. It was a lot of fun to do with this nib. And then the curl I get at the end of this antenna was just so perfect. Just... It was amazing. <laughs> Okay, moving on, I kind of go in and this is where I start thickening, thickening up the different lines. And I, well, my goal was to add a little bit more detail or to define the detail better. So I kind of add like a shadowing effect, which is really just thickening up one of the lines on one side. And then I remember I add, and to add in the neck the front part of the neck, the lines on that, which you'll see coming up here in a second, or two, or three, or four, five, six, seven, maybe? <laughs> okay, right here. I go, no, not right here. What? Come on. Right about sometime soon how about that I end up adding the lines to the neck but for here I am just kind of going back and I end up stippling those little plates on the joints I wanted to call them shoulder plates but I end up adding stippling to those to add some texture and I end up I also end up going over the neck and stippling which I'm doing right now to add more texture and stippling it looks really cool for those artists who like do whole pieces all the shading is stippling or even cross hatching like it's amazing but it takes forever it's a cool effect though and I am nearly done so I just kind of add keep on adding little details and all but if you guys have watched to this point, um, comment down in this comment section, stippling. I think that'd be a fun special word since you guys got this far. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And if you guys end up working on any projects I would love to see them so um, tag me at Sid the Illustrator on Instagram or even on TikTok and I'd love to see it be sure to check out you guys' work and until next time I will see you guys later thank you guys so much for watching bye